Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today's topic is communication channels and modulation. The course title is Principles of Communication Systems. I am Dr. Zishan Kaleem from EC Department CI Bar Campus. In this lecture, let's move to the lecture content. In this lecture, we will cover the communications channels and why we prefer prefer digital communications over analog communication. So what are the communication channels? Uh, channel is the most important part in the communication systems because the overall performance of the system depends on the communication channels. So there can be a numerous types of channels, for example, physical channel. It includes wireless electromagnetic channels. They are, there can be atmosphere, free space, ionospheric channels and there can be a wild line channels as we have seen that twisted pair wireless channel wild line channel coaxial cable optical fibers and the other channels which we usually don't see is the underwater acoustic channels so these are the three physical channels which are very important to see the performance of the communication system because the performance is directly dependent on the physical channel. So usually uh, the communication systems which on which we are working nowadays, for example, the mobile communication systems, other uh, wireless communication and that includes the Zigbee, uh, Bluetooth, etc. These are, are under the category of the wireless channel. So the problem is that the wireless channel is unpredictable as compared to the wireless channels because we know in violent channels that after some distance there will be a how much dB loss but in wireless channels these are usually random because we can't predict uh, the uh, hurdles in between the channels the obstructions and the buildings etc so it can be changing with time and with place so it makes the wireless channel too much random so the common feature of distinct physical channels include noises interference from the adjacent channels so noise uh, in general uh, means the interference as well but specifically for communication system noise usually focus on the uh, receiver side so due to the thermal um, movement right uh, for example, there is a heat in the devices, so the heat will disturb the communication system on the receiver side. So we treat that kind of nice thermal noise, we call it a thermal noise, and that category usually is called noise in the communication system. And the other noises are called the interference, and when the interference is from the adjacent channels, adjacent means when we are transmitting, there are specific bands, for example, 1 to 10 megahertz, 10 to 20 megahertz. So these two are adjacent bands, right? 1 to 10, for example, and 10 to 20, for example. So these two are adjacent. When the data from band 1 overlaps with the data from the band 2, with the band 2, then this is called the interference of the adjacent cell channels, right? So we need to model these nice so um, these channels so to if you will model properly model these channels then we can judge the performance so model for communication channels reflect the most important characteristics of the transmission medium that is the physical channel so be able to conveniently use in design and analysis of the communication system so if we know the behavior of the communication system model of the communication system then we can uh, uh, properly design the are analyze the communication system so without knowing the channel we can't predict the output we can't design we can't get the desired output which we transmitted from the transmitter side okay noise in communication so noise channel unavoidable presence of a noise in the channel so noise refers to the unwanted waves that disturb the communications and the signal is contaminated by noise along the path 
So there can be externalized, as I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, which we usually call interference. And there can be internalized, that I mentioned as the noise in the previous slide. So there can be thermalized, random emission in electronic devices. So these internalizes are usually due to the electronic devices. And noise is one of the basic factors that sets the limits of the communication. Because if you have no noise, then the system would be ideal. Which that we transmitted, we will get back on the receiver side. But due to noise, that transmission is affected. So let's move on how it looks like. For example, you are transmitting ST data, and when it passes to the channel, this is your channel, dotted block is your channel. So when it passes to the channel, this noise is added, not multiplied, this noise is added, and we will get the receive signal, which is equal to the transmitted data plus noise. So as the noise is added here, so this channel is called the additive noise channel. Due to addition of noise, this is called additive noise channel, right? Physically, NT arising from electronic components and amplifiers both at the transmitter and receiver. As I mentioned, usually the term noise is used in the communication as the noise which is generated by electronic component. So statistically, uh, noise is a random process. So uh, what kind of random process? I think you have studied uh, probability and random uh, numbers uh, at the probability course previously. So you model some random processes so with some distribution. So as noise is a random process, so we must have a distribution for noise. So what kind of distribution noise follows? It follows Gaussian distribution, right? So when propagation happens, signal attenuation occurs. So uh, as I mentioned here, there is RT is equal to ST plus NT. This we mention only ST, no attenuation is mentioned. So when propagation happens, your signal weaken, uh, also weakens by a distance. So that uh, weak uh, weakness of the signal uh, weaken, uh, is called the attenuation. And that is represented in equation as AST. So we have a uh, weak signal as compared to the original signal. So we have a factor called the A represent the attenuation factor that will uh, represent the attenuation in the original signal plus addition in the noise. So we will have a received signal at the receiver side AST plus NT in practical. The other uh, in wireless standard limiting factor is the multipath channel. Widely used in wireless communication, what are the multipath channels? For example, uh, in easy way I can tell you, uh, I think everyone has experienced this. Whenever you sit uh, in a room which is uh, closed and there are loudspeakers around, so when person speaks, then uh, in a loudspeaker, then there is our reflection and you hear the echo, right? Echo means uh, due to reflection, you hear twice the same voices, right? For example, I say hello. So after, uh, firstly you listen hello and uh, afterwards you will also listen, after some time you will listen hello again. For example, hello, hello, this way. So this is echo. So similarly in wireless medium, uh, or because uh, when transmitter send, this is your transmitter, wants to send the data to the receiver, which is on the, uh, sitting on the car. So there will be one wire direct path. This is called a direct path. Directly data will reach from here to the here. This is line of sight. And there will be some reflection. Here they mentioned two reflections are refraction. So this is one path and this is the other. So there are three paths. For example, one center one, second, and third. So there are three paths to read the receiver. So when a data is transmitted, at the receiver side, you will receive the multiple copies after different time. Look at this. This is the direct. You will receive the same signal. For example, I say hello, you will receive hello here. Then from the second path, you will also receive after reflection hello here. And then again, third path, you will receive the hello here again, right? So three hello one hello transmitted and at the receiver side you receive three hellos. 
So this is called the multipath. So how we model this multipath channel? So this is called the multipath channel model. For example, if you see that this is your signal at the sender, signal one, so one data, and this is your second data. But when you transmit this one data, right, and the receiver side, you receive three copies of the same data. Look at this. This is one uh, dark blue second, and here the third. Right? These are three copies of the first data, right? This of A data, we called it A. Right? And this is our B data, means the second data, right? So A, there are three copies because of three parts and the amplitude at the shape is a little bit different. This is due to attenuation. And for similarly, the light blue B, we have a three pulses, right? This one, this one, this one. So these are called multi-path pulses. So in this, there will be one line of sight direct. So this is called line of sight pulses. The first one, like the blue uh, uh, with the more amplitude and the other are called the multi-path pulses due to reflection. So to mathematically model it, you know that uh, this is more like an impulse, right? Impulse function. And this is your uh, attenuation factor. So if there are three paths, so there will be three or, uh, three waves at the receiver side, three data signals at the receiver side. So for example, A1, K is equal to one, A1, delta T minus, for example, this is at zero time delay. So T minus zero, so delta T at T is equal to zero, you will receive this one. T minus one, for example, at after one millisecond delay, T equals to two after two millisecond delay. So there will be a three path, zero, one, two, right? And their amplitude will be degraded due to channel. So this is channel representation, right? And L here represent, if you, you make it channel, so number of paths, multi-path. So L is the number of multi-path propagation paths. And uh, tau k is the possibly delay attenuation factor. So these are the delay. So uh, at the receiver side, this is the channel H, this part. At the receiver side, there will be an addition of a noise as we discussed in the previous slide. So there will be noise addition as well. So at the receiver side, channel plus noise. So your data S, C minus T, A, K uh, into R. So when you multiply S with the channel delta, so it will automatically become S, not delta. Because anything multiplied by the delta or the impulse, you will get the same data. For example, one multiplied by two, you will get the two. So two multiplied by three multiplied by one, you will get the three. So we will get S here in general, right? So this is the mathematical model to represent the multipath channel with the transmitted data. So we have a received data in this way. So this is the channel model and this is the receive signal after passing to the multipath channel. The other important factor, you must remember this, to measure the communication system performance is the signal to noise ratio at the receiver side. So what is this? This is defined as the ratio of the signal power to the noise power. So uh, it can be written as signal to noise ratio, signal power over noise power. So signal power here means that the received signal power, not the transmitted signal power, because this metric is usually used at the receiver side. So widely used metric to, is the signal to noise power ratio to measure the effect of a noise in the system. So uh, this metric is helpful to measure how much the performance is degraded due to the noise at the receiver side. So signal strength decreases as the noise increases. If you will increase the noise, then signal will strength will decrease. It means SNR will decrease. Their unit is a dB because this is a ratio of the signal powers so they have a dB unit, right? You must remember the SNR, right? Analog and digital messages. The other thing, important thing is what is the different difference between the analog and the digital system? So first of all, we will discuss analog and digital messages. So digital messages, they are constructed with a finite number of symbols. For example, a text file, which has a 50 symbols, 26 letters, 10 numbers, space, several punctuation marks. Morse code telegraph is a binary message. So implying only two symbols, mark and space. For example, when we transmit data, there will be a mark. When no transmission, space, mark, 
face so this is like a mode code right so digitally we have digital means that we have a finite number of symbols right in analog you have a they are characterized by data whose values vary over continuous range you have are familiar with the sinusoidal signal right this one which is analog and you have seen that these are level signal right this is your digital signal so here only one zero bits but uh, represented by the level one bit right levels so there is only information in the levels like high level low level high level low level there is uh, no information exactly no information on this part but just only in the level whereas in analog there will be a complete information in every part of the message like this one. so if any part is disturbed you will not get the data so this is a difference between analog and digital messages so there are common misunderstandings that any transmitted signals are analog no digital signals can be transmitted so you must remember that whenever we talk about digital system it doesn't mean that we are transmitting in the medium like the wireless medium the digital signal but there will be only analog signal in the medium but the only the difference will be in the processing there will be a digital signal processing on the transmitter side and the receiver side and so whereas the transmission in the medium will always be analog so analog message is the continuous is amplitude and over time as i discussed digital messages include 0 or 1 discrete values there are some example digital age why digital communication will prevail we will discuss on the upcoming slide that why digital communication is important the most important thing uh, in the digital communication is the noise immunity of the digital signals for example as i mentioned that this is your digital signal right so only information is in the level for example if you are transmitting one here and zero here right digital data so uh, nothing is hidden in this part right no message is here just only the level right if you have a level above zero right this one level above zero plus a by two this is can be a some voltage right so if it is above zero we will consider it as a one and if it is a below zero we will consider it as a zero so if there are this is transmitted signal right a is a transmitted signal b is the received distorted signal without noise so we receive a signal at the receiver side distortion because after covering some distance there will be attenuation or distortion so without including any noise at the receiver side so its shape will be different so if uh, you can see that the shape is a bit different from the A, but the information it carries is similar. Why? Look at this. This part was or from Z above zero. So similarly, we have above zero, so information is one. This was below zero, so we have information zero. Similarly, here we have above zero, one, zero, one. So there is no damage done to the information. So after uh, in C, there is a received distorted signal with noise. After including noise, there is a distorted signal. But same, if you notice here, we have a above zero, this part, we consider at one. And if we have a uh, below zero, we consider it zero. Here, we have a noise effect here, but still it is above zero. So we will consider this part as a one, right? There is no part here below zero. Afterwards, this is below zero, so we will consider similarly here as a zero and one. So if you see that there is nothing been changed after even adding noise without noise, so we can regenerate at the receiver side the same message as with some delay at the transmitter side. One zero one zero. The delay is natural because of a transmission. There will be always a delay. So this delay is due to transmission right but if you notice here there will be same message information as in the transmitted side so digital signal are transmitted using a finite set of electrical wave forms as i mentioned mark and space 
Various signals can be easily recovered even they are distorted by noise or interference because of two levels detection at the receiver side. We need to only detect the level, not exact shape of the signal. This is the key point here. And the other advantage of uh, using a digital system is the repeaters in a digital communication system. What are repeaters? Repeaters in short is an amplifier. Uh, if you are doing some digital transmission, so uh, you know that after, if it is a wired medium, you know that the signal will degrade after some distance. So you can put the repeaters or amplifier over there. So repeater stations are placed along the path of a digital system to ensure that the noise and distortion remain within the remit. So regenerative repeaters will regenerate the signal and distance. For example, I can show you pictorially. This is the distance after you feel that the signal power degrades, right? Up to some dB, right? So you will put another re repeater here, R for example. So when it passes to here, it will regenerate the same signal with the same level. For example, when you transmit the digital data, that level was this much, right? right? When it reaches here, it levels degrades and it reaches to some this value, right? So after passing through regenerated repeater, it will generate the similar like this one, right? Again, and this one. So, in this way, it can travel far and without any distraction. So this is the main reason of the superiority of the digital signal, superiority of the digital spectrum over analog one. Right? So, these were the reasons which, why, that's why we preferred analog uh, system, digital system over the analog system. The other uh, important point is the analog to digital conversion. So for analog to digital conversion, we have a sampling theorem. Uh, we will discuss this uh, in the upcoming lecture, right? Analog digital conversion in more detail. Thank you for listening. For question answer session, there will be a separate online session. So exact date and time will be communicated later on. Thank you very much.